Let's do some stories. Now, some members of parliament have joined calls for the Finance Committee to make its probe into the collapse of banks a public inquiry. The committee announced on Wednesday that it's beginning an official probe into the collapse. The committee said it will hold in-camera sittings on the 5th, the 6th and the 7th of September, during which it will interrogate various officials. Now, the move is to allow persons with sensitive information to share freely when they appear before the committee. Leadership of the committee will, however, hold daily media briefings after each sitting. But the MPs have criticized the decision, demanding a public hearing. Why should it be a close um, hearing or a close sitting? I mean, this is a public matter and it should, it should be dealt with in the public domain. You know, we're talking about um, ordinary Ghanaians' monies that were lodged with a financial institution and these monies were not handled properly. I mean, why should it be in camera? I don't subscribe to the idea that it should be done in camera at all because I am also an affected uh, a, a person. You know, so why should we say that it should be done in camera? What is so sensitive about this? Is it about national security? I don't think it's about national security. So it's a matter that should be dealt with, you know, um, you know, in the public, so that everybody could listen to them loud and clear, just like how we dealt with, um, how they call it, um, uh, the reconciliation issues uh, during President Kufour's era. You know, Ghanaians should know. In itself, reinforces their confidence in the functionality of our public institutions and systems, and to let them know that in spite of all of these mistakes, there will be sanctions and punishments. Nobody's above the law, and their people are also acting in their best interest. And for me, I think that this justifies the need to have a public hearing where all the issues will be run, run all right. But it's not everything about a company or an institution that you want to expose to the general public. Because we also have other banks that are operating, and we want to guard against people losing confidence in the way they operate. We should bear in mind that the main objective is to improve upon the way banks are managed. It, the interest is not to name and shame somebody. So if by uh, doing it in camera, we'll be able to solicit the information that is needed and be able to take the rightful decisions. Maybe what comes out as conclusions should be the one that should go into the general public domain. Meanwhile, a member of the Finance Committee, Daniel Ochim Abwaje, says the decision is not cast in stone. What we decided, I mean, like I said initially, in the, in the wisdom of the chairman of the Finance Committee, Dr. Asibe Yabua, you know, feels that what is going on constitutionally, we have oversight responsibility of this Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance. And uh, so we have to try to meet them and hear them, you know, tell us what happened, what are the causes, who are the people behind. So even though we have heard it in the media and all that, but we also represent the people. And it is, it is important that people go to know what has happened. And of course, maybe through the hearing, we may be able to get opportunity to improve some law or even bring some new law or even pick up some lessons that will help us improve what we do. Because we all do know that banking is the heart of the economy and uh, people's confidence in banking matters. This is not a, a political issue in terms of MPP and DC. That's not how we wanted to look at it. So we want to go in Ghana first. What happened? Tell us what is going on and what are the status of what we are doing to try to get out of the situation and ensure that in the future these things don't happen again. So basically that's Now the member of parliament for Bantama, Mr. Ochima Bwaje, also described as unfortunate comments by Pastor Minsa Otaville that he was not responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the bank. I think uh, it's, it's unfortunate, uh, and of course, Pastor Otabe is a highly respected pastor in Ghana and a leader that we've all, all admired. And we listened to his, you know, preachings, and you know, because he speaks motivation. And so, uh, even though he was, he would say he was non-executive board chair. It doesn't take him. He cannot excuse himself with that, uh, with that lie because. Truly speaking, you are ultimately responsible. 
whether you were directly connected or not, or you were supposed to ensure that there are systems and controls in place to ensure that things work. So to say I'm a non-executive, either maybe he didn't understand what it, what, it, what it meant at that time to be a board chair. You are responsible. You provide the strategic direction and make sure everybody is working. So people, in an attempt to get it on top of their salary, they behave properly. Because could you, at the end of the day, all the numbers we look at, Let's move from Parliament to the Executive, where the Chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Professor Frimpong Boating, has dropped hints. The ban on small-scale mining will be lifted before December this year. Ahead of that, though, he's announced a number of events that will precede the lifting of the ban. Uh, the roadmap, along, uh, alongside other things, will require small-scale mining firms to have their licenses vetted and verified and their earth-moving equipment used in mining registered and tracked. All military and paramilitary personnel guarding large-scale mining concessions will also be withdrawn from mining firms which violate state regulations, with the Operation Vanguard Task Force being the only security agency mandated to offer protection services. Maxwell Agbaba has this report. Since its inception, the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining has put in measures geared towards sanitizing the mining sector. Some of these include formation of 60 ad hoc district committees on legal mining across the country to fight galamse at the district level, and the training of 3,000 artisanal small-scale miners. Announcing the roadmap for lifting the ban, the chairman of the committee, Professor Frimpong Boatin, suggested the lifting of the ban on small-scale mining may come sooner than later. Now, somebody will ask me, when exactly are we going to lift the ban? I cannot say it now, but I know that his excellency, the president, will want small-scale miners to spend the Christmas very well. That one I can say. But it will all depend upon how we go on with this roadmap. It can be much earlier than we anticipate, or it can go for maybe a week or two. But one thing I can say is that the president wants you to earn some money and enjoy your Christmas. One, we are going to direct that all excavators be brought to designated areas in all the regions, and the regional ministers will make sure that this is done. The reason we want to do that is that we want to give every excavator an electronic tracking device. Every excavator will be moved to a particular area and to receive an electronic tracking device. This announcement will be made on the 20th of this month, next week. So we are going to withdraw all military and paramilitary forces from the ground, and Operation Vanguard will be the only force that will be in the mining concessions. Because you don't want a situation where some private person will, will go and hire somebody to um, provide security for a company and come into conflict with Operation Vanguard. So we want a situation where Operation Vanguard will maintain sanity in all the mining concessions. He also talked about a new app to be used to link the activities of regulatory agencies and also monitor the activities of small-scale miners. Mentioned Gallam Stop. This is a software that we have developed, very solid, and I hope that one of us will come and demonstrate how it works. So we are going to link all the agencies, Forestry Commission, Water Resources Commission, EPA, DVLA, uh, in this picture, you will see a gentleman who owns a concession. Uh, three of them, their names are there. You have their chain, that is tax identification numbers, their addresses, their bio data, and so on. And this will be incorporated into a card, an ID card. So with this information, we will know exactly where the concession is, their GPS coordinates, the uh, Ghana Post address and whether they have licenses, whether the license has expired and so on.
Though happy, the ban on the operations will soon be lifted. Director of Operations at the Ghana Association of Small Scale Miners, Emmanuel Uinchi Enchi, says December is still several months away and asked for a more definite date. By December, December is too far. I mean, um, when you look at what the Honorable Minister illustrated through his presentation, uh, one will argue that um, the target they set for themselves, um, they've achieved over 70% of those targets. So then we don't see the reason why the ban should be extended up to December. Um, I would wish that um, it should be lifted as soon as possible, and that as soon as possible shouldn't be more than a month from now. Right, let's move away from that for a minute. Let's talk about the Hajj. The chairman of the Hajj board, Sheikh I.C. Kwei, has dismissed media reports of chaos at the Hajj village where Ghanaian pilgrims are processed for airlifting to Saudi Arabia. Now, he explained that the congestion at the transit camp was as a result of family members trooping in to see their loved ones off. Now, according to him, the 2018 Hajj has so far been smooth with aircraft airlifting the pilgrims to Mecca as scheduled. When aircrafts, you know, have come far ahead of time and waiting for pilgrims to be checked and then go on board, what is the delay in this? What is the delay in this? There's no delay whatsoever. Two aircrafts are waiting now and then waiting for us to check, to check the pregames through and then to go on board. There's no delay whatsoever. If we did 13 days last year, and today we are doing five days, and if we have aircrafts actually coming in and out and all that, about three, four a day, where, where, and where, where shall we suffer delay? So it's not true. And I think you have to you have to actually help on this for us. And then there's some who say alleged alleged chaos at the at the hard board. Chaos in what way? Fighting us or what? When there's flow, free, free flow. But there are some who have come to see their pregames off. So and you find that some of them they don't want us to succeed. And therefore, I remember one time when actually we took the trouble to announce the uh, the uh, what do you call it uh, the, the 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 fresh schedule to them. Where would you get this? Somebody was standing behind and throwing throwing his hands here and there, and that sort of thing. That's all that we saw. Only one person. But the next day, you know, when 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 uh, he got through with his mother. And those who were who were going, and they all got through easily. He came down. He came to kneel down to beg me. I say, I'm, I'm, I'm just a mere uh, uh, slave of God. He shouldn't need that to, to me at all or for me. So he came to beg with with him, with him. He, he came with them to beg that he has sinned against God and he has sinned against me because what 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 he thought was wrong. So that answers the question of chaos at the hard board and all that. We talked about, we talked about congestion. The congest congestion is caused by those who have come to see off their dear ones or relatives and all that and so on. That's, that's it. But the pregame themselves, look at it, from yesterday, the, the place was empty. The chairs were empty. And today we are begging all those who have who have uh, 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 visas on their on their on their on their um, passports to come. And I think that we are dealing with that. I'm quite sure that we'll be able to carry all of them today. Nobody will be left out. And that's it for news this morning. But look who's here, Princess Mamavi of the Kingdom of Wudin. You're looking wonderful, Mama. Thank I love you, that. Kojo. <laughs> I thought I'd give a little inspiration. If you have a special somewhere that you have to go this weekend, why don't you check the person who designed this for me? Maybe Absolutely. she can make something 
even better for you. I have a wedding in Cape Coast. Yeah? Uh, okay. I wonder whether she can hook me up. She can fix you. Yes, yes, Ajua yes. Yeboa clothing. Mm. She's the maker of this beautiful dress. But the fabric is from Woodin. is Le Creator. And yeah. that's what uh, I rock on Thursdays and Fridays on the AM show. So yes. if you like it, and I hope that you do, check Ajua Yeboa clothing out. She's on Instagram and Facebook. All social media handles is Ajua Yeboa clothing. Fantastic. And give her a call. I love it. The yeah. whole lace I situation. Like what you're wearing too, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, mommy. <laughs> I think today you'll have to walk around town with a bodyguard. I will. Because, Sally, the you fans know, the, will come. The idea is to, <laughs> you know, take some pictures. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, we should yeah. plan it. You don't get to wear this every day. It's true. It's absolutely <laughs> true. But you certainly wear it well. And today we've got so much coming up, haven't we? Yeah, Quite we a do. packed show indeed. We do. Uh, but you know what? That's probably a reason why we should get started now. Absolutely. Uh, before we settle down for the newspapers, though, uh, yesterday we heard of the news of the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, passing. Uh, and so just a little reminder, mm. just in case you've forgotten, who she was she is this is one uh, you know that's very popular in fact every music of hers is popular so enjoy it as we remember the queen of soul <laughs> 